I had, I had heard something about that. We're ready. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the May 22nd Malala City Council meeting. Uh, this meeting has now come to order. Would uh, you please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? Same thing. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Seated. Um, okay, we'll start off with uh, roll call, starting with Councilor Shank. Thank you for reminding me who I am. <laughs> 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 Councilor Shankle present. Councilor Newland here. Councilor Palumbo here. Councilor Childers present. Councilor Klein present. Mayor Swigert present. Dan Huff, City Manager present. Shawnee Seifert, Finance Director, present. Gerald Fisher, Public Works Director, present. Okay, we have a public comment request. Uh, Deanna Portis, please step up to the podium, state your name and address for the record. Uh, Dina Portis, 424 West Main, here in Malala. Okay. Okay, um, the ordinance that we have for food cuts right now um, only allows me six months to stay in a certain area and I do have a lot that I'm able to actually have a place where I can I just want something permanent instead of something that I have to retreat after six months um, so I'm wanting to know if we can change the ordinance for food carts and allow food carts to stay instead of retreat after six months and with my food cart, I'll be using local <laughs> businesses, the bakery and the produce department in Milano for this particular business. Um, and it'll be fresh soups and sandwiches. Okay. Um, I went by the lot. It's right behind the funeral home, correct? It is. Yeah. Okay. Um, and we, I believe, uh, staff is working on uh, ordinance for food carts. Or will be? At the very beginning stage of that. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's all I can ask for. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We're working on it, so we'll have okay. to uh, get back to you. Wonderful. Okay. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh. I'm sorry. Can I ask her a question? Right sure. There? I'm sorry. Can I just ask a quick question? How long have you been at your current location? Is it, are you like in a situation where it's about to be six months and you have to move or where are you at with that? No, I'm right at the beginning phases, okay. but I, I mean the, with the waterworks and stuff like that, it's, it's costing me so much money and I'm, I'm working with Gerald with that, but it would take me two years to pay that. And I, you know, there's no point in me staying for six months if I have to pay for the water for two years because of the way the STDs or whatever that is. But yeah, that I'd have to pay for two years and I can only stay for six months because it's kind of pointless. Okay. Yeah. All Thank right. you. Thank you. If, if I can make yes. a couple mm -hmm. of comments, um, uh, <coughs> Gerald and, and our uh, senior planner, Alice Cannon, have been working, working on this pretty diligently over the last couple of weeks. Um, Alice has already come up with kind of a tentative plan on how to move forward with some design standards. And really what the issue is, is um, what, what Ms. Portis is talking about is an option we came up with to allow a food cart to come in on a lot mm -hmm. because we don't have any standards for food carts. We don't right. have standards for a food cart pod, as you've seen in some other communities. So mm -hmm. what what we would like to do, um, it's, gonna, it's gonna take us some time. We're gonna have to do some community outreach with this, um, but probably sometime towards the end of the summer, uh, we, we may be able to bring something to the planning commission for some, it's actually, a, it's actually food cart standards that we don't currently have. It's not really an amendment to the ordinance that we have. It's establishing new standards that don't exist. Right. Um, so we would need to do some outreach to the community. Hopefully we'll get some. So it's good when you get it. And um, we can come back with some standards. And one of the reasons why we don't have standards is because until Ms. Portis showed up, we haven't really had any pressure. No. And that's kind of what forces a lot of cities to to uh, take action is when they get some pressure, because otherwise we obviously have other things to work on and nobody was banging on the door until now. So 
So, <laughs> so good job. <laughs> so there you go. There always so has if, to be a guinea pig. Yeah. So. so if she were to do this to be getting set up, she would be set up for six months and possibly well, at the end of that time period, we'd have something maybe in line. Potentially the, the code that we have today that would allow a food cart to come in. Mm -hmm. um, it has a six month limitation on it. And then there's a, there's a provision in the ordinance that allows for an extension of that time. Mm -hmm. um, the problem with it is if there's an investment into right. establishing an operation that also comes with the potential that it might not be able to stay there past six months or even a year if you get an extension. Right. I, I, you know, that's an investment that most people don't want to make. Mm -hmm. And um, so, so if you had an actual standard, it would eliminate that temporary right. mm -hmm. component of it. Okay. Any more questions? Okay. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Uh -huh. Okay, Council can send agenda tonight uh, covers uh, the special meeting minutes on May 2nd and May 8th. I don't know if everybody's put them over. If so, I would uh, entertain a motion and a second to adopt the consent agenda. No, we talked about that. I mean, I stopped doing it. I make a motion we ex ex adopt the consent agenda. Um, as written. Second. There's been a motion and a second. Do you need a? I got it. Okay. Thank you. All, right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Seeing none. It is adopted. Okay. Um, this wasn't on the agenda, but I'm going to take the time right now because according to our council rules, this is when I would do it. Can everybody hear me if I stand up? I mean, obviously there's Okay, this is a section for awards. Councillor Childress, could you please stand up by me, please? <laughs> this is a Distinguished Service Award to Malala City Councillor Leota Childress. As a member of the Malala community and now a city councillor, we have watched you work tirelessly, tirelessly, boy, Dry mouth, I'm sorry. To better our community, your unwavering character and integrity are above reproach, and it has been a formidable illustration for the balance of our city council to emulate. Leota has tirelessly, tirelessly, and sometimes single handedly promoted Malala by working on the following community programs the Malala Warming Center, Malala Area Chamber of Commerce, Community Banners, and Celebrate Malala. In conclusion, I want to thank you, Leota, for your leadership, commitment, and perseverance to keep our goals in sight for our community. I commend you for your work and dedication. <laughs> you deserve it. Okay. Thank you. Okay, now uh, we're going to ordinances, resolutions, proclamations. Okay, oh, this is ordinance 2019-06. Okay, do we have any more discussion on this? Which we should. I, do, I can explain a little okay. if you'd like. Okay. Um, I handed out two kind of clean ordinances that I placed by your um, locations. Um, they, if you look at page two, both of the ordinances I put by your locations are exactly the same except for page two under um, A. One of them, if you look at A, uh, I, uh, one A I I I always like these numberings, but no more than two voting members, maybe non residents of the city. There shall always be more residents of the city than non residents on the commission. That's the standard that you would go to if you don't have any restrictions on who can, <clears throat> by virtue of where they live or 
own a business. There's no standards included. The second ordinance that's that's by you, if you look at page two, includes the um, includes the three mile radius component that you talked about. And there was a little back and forth at your last meeting on what you actually wanted to see. And if you look at what's in your packet, we we included a few examples of some cities and how they determine what they do with their planning commission. Um, it, so we got the city of Sandy, city of Milwaukee, city of Estacada, city of Canby, um, Oregon City, Oregon City. And one of the problems that we have in Malala is our, our, our UGB and our city limits are almost the same. Okay. Other cities, if you look around the state and other states, you know, you'll have a, well, I should say in the state of Oregon because other states don't have urban growth boundaries. But like if you're within metro, metro is the urban growth boundary for the entire metro area. Uh, cities like Malala usually will have a UGB that's a little bit bigger. You might have an unincorporated area that includes some neighborhoods and a few businesses and things that maybe the city hadn't annexed yet. Uh, we don't have that area like a lot of cities do. Um, and so that's one of the reasons why you might see some U UGB restrictions in there. Um, and uh, because we're kind of a little further out, we're 15 miles from everywhere and anywhere. Um, it's up to you. It's your call as a governing body on what you want to do. But I gave you two kind of clean ordinances. You can pick one or the other or not pick either of them. That's obviously your prerogative. Uh, but then we have the examples of what some other cities are doing. I think it's important to kind of take a look at what other cities are doing, but keep it in context that it might not apply here. So that's all I had. I've given this a lot of thought. And while it might be convenient to have every circumstance under which we would approve someone and just do check boxes to see that they qualify. I think that's really putting the screws down on something that we as a council have a right to, uh, okay, what are these? we need vet, discretion yeah. to vet this person. Mm -hmm. If we just have a checklist and they miss one of them, uh, we might be, chucking them out the door and they would be a great, you know, commissioner. So my thought on this is that we do not have the three mile radius, which we didn't have before, because once again, we are limiting ourselves to a lot of other options, just like the business owner in town and so forth. And uh, as a council, we have the right and the obligation to interview applicants and to decide if we think they're going to be a good fit. And if they are, then we can appoint them. And if they're not, even if they live two blocks from here, if they're not gonna be a good fit, right. we don't appoint them. I think that's a, I think Councillor Childress has made a good point. The only thing I would suggest is that we do keep the, um, the minimum of five members inside the city limits. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I agree. Um, the council does have the right to uh, put somebody into the position or take somebody out of the position. Mm -hmm. um, and we can interview them. If you have somebody coming from another city, if they're going to be here and there's no conflicts, if they're going to be here for the meetings, then yeah, I agree. I don't see why we, and we're not, let's face it, nobody's knocking the doors down. Yeah, exactly. To be on a planning committee. Right. <laughs> so, yeah. So. I have a, the only thing yes. that I would see with the problem of this second one that, not the one that has the three mile radius, but the mm -hmm. other one is that in part A, we said there's a minimum of three members. If we had to have a situation where there was only three planning commission members and two of them were from outside of the city. Have we? I, yeah. I guess, yeah, because <laughs> there's been times where well, our planning commission hasn't been seven members. But uh, section two, right under that, the last sentence, says there shall always be more residents of the city than not than non residents. Right. Yeah. So, so what if there happens were three if, people, it would have to be two to one. So what happens if we had a situation where we did have five members?
members. Two of them were from outside of the city area, and then people resigned. So now we have one and two, or two and two. Do you have well, to? I, I think one of them. <laughs> well, if you look at it this way, if you're if you if you're dropping down that low, it might be a situation where the city can't field the planning commission. Let's just right. say you get to that point, <laughs> and then. Um, Fortunately or unfortunately, you all get to act as that body um, if you can't field one. I know there was uh, a time here in Malala where we were having a lot of difficulty fielding a planning commission. Um, we did, uh, we conducted a lot of work. It was really hard to get people to come on the commission. There was a, there was a problem with the format when I first arrived here nobody was paying attention to who lived in and who lived out. Mm. And we were off balance a lot. And so uh, it took us a while to get the uh, ship right. But I think right now, and Gerald would probably agree with me that we have some great folks on the commission. Uh, they're committed to Malala and making things work here and making great decisions and reading what we give them, which is a lot of stuff sometimes. Um, it's probably one of those things where I would say you have some minimum standards, but you hope you never get there, but you have a reason to make a decision if you do. And we were hoping that we never get there again. Um, so I would have a, I would have a question on that because of your statement about we would have to do it as a body. If we could not have a planning commission, we didn't have the members. If that situation happened, could two council members be on the council and the planning commission, or is that a no-no? No. Okay. And so, they couldn't be on council if it well, was right. Field. That's true. The other option that we kept in the ordinance that you you have an opportunity to consider mm -hmm. is if you do get into that. So let's say you did get into a situation. If you recall, we left the hearings officer as a potential comp. Uh, component if you ever choose to do that. Some cities will use hearings officers when the planning commission can't keep up with the activity or they send certain, you know, smaller decisions to a hearings officer. So the other way around that, if you get into that situation, is you hire a hearings officer in the interim until you can field another planning commission again. Was and the then, hearings officer somebody, though, that was that the one that had to be a lawyer? Yes. And they're usually attorneys. Okay. Um, they hire themselves out to make Okay. And make then are we decisions. in trouble that they might not be a resident of Malala? No, because they okay. would be a contractor. They would be a contractor. Okay. They would be a contractor of the city council to make those decisions. You would still act as the appeal body if something was appealed. Okay. okay. Um, that's another option, too. Worst case scenario. Um. Well, and I've given this a lot of thought, too, since our last meeting. And, you know, while I'm somebody that kind of likes uh, a criteria to be really clear and, like Leo said, you know, have those boxes you can check off, I also agree that um, we have the responsibility, like you said, to um, assess each applicant and who they are, what their role is in this community, um, and how they would fit in overall mm -hmm. in this type of a process. So um, I wouldn't want to eliminate people simply because they live one foot outside of a um, kind of arbitrary border that we've drawn around the city. Right. And I think it does make sense to um, open that up and put the responsibility on us to really do our yeah, job sure. and vet the people that are interested in this type of a work, you know, position. So. Well, I just have the first and second reading it. Oh. No. Okay, sure. All right. Um, it sounded uh, to me, anyway, correct me if I'm wrong, that we had somewhat of a consensus on uh, the ordinance staying the same, not having a three mile radius. Yeah, correct? Mm -hmm. Okay, well, then we can. Uh, Put this to bed tonight, but I will need a uh, motion and a second for the first reading. The, there were some oh, other changes oh, in just here, but we have to. I think those were the same as last, yeah, weren't they? The, the only change from what we gave you previously, which is in your packet, 
was the issue with the three mile radius okay. or no three mile radius. Right. So, okay, so if you look in your packet, the uh, the red line version that you have in your packet are the other changes that we've cleaned up the ordinance with right. that you had last time. Um, so everything's the same except for the clean one here. We just, we thought it was easier to read for that mm -hmm. purpose if we gave you a clean one. Yes, thank you. So. And we did change the phrase about uh, youth and the public, just the youth and the city of Malala being. Um, yes. C or yeah. B. Uh, but I'm see. saying that was a change too. Yeah, we we limited that yeah. the youth policy to that becomes B. But um, there was some stuff in the old ordinance that talked about GPA and all kinds of things. And yeah, I don't see that. Right. I don't want to monitor that. And I no, think you guys did uh -huh. either. So. I don't think we need to, unless it takes time out of their studies, which we don't want to do. But or unless it's one we want to a month. volunteer our GPAs. <laughs> <laughs> I still have one. I would be willing. <laughs> okay. Um, is there any more discussion? Okay. Could I get a motion? In a second. Can I make first a reading. motion that we have a first reading by title, title only of ordinance number 2019-06? A second. Okay. <clears throat> what it is? Man. Did you get those? I got it. Okay. Thank you. All right. Uh, ordinance number 2019-06, an ordinance of the City of Molalla, Oregon, amending ordinance 2108-05, Molalla Municipal Code, Chapter 2.06, hearing bodies and their duties. Any discussions on that? Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Seeing none, I will need a... Motion a second for a second reading. I make a motion. We make a we have a second reading of ordinance number 2019-06, an ordinance of the city of Malala, Oregon, amending ordinance 2108-05, Malala Municipal Code, chapter 206, hearing bodies and their duties. Second. Second. Okay. I have a motion and a second for a second reading. Ordinance number 2019-06, an ordinance of the City of Malala, Oregon, amending ordinance 2108-05, Malala Municipal Code, Chapter 2.06, hearing bodies and their duties. Having all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Seeing none. Now I will need a motion if uh, you're ready to adopt, a motion and a second to adopt. Ordinance number 2019-06. So be it. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Seeing none? Need a second. Yeah, oh, didn't I get a second? No, I'm second. sorry. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Second. Opposed? Yeah. Okay. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Just leave it. No, it's, it's closed. Okay. Okay, moving on. To... New business. Financial policy discussion. Would you like to take this, Shani? Sure. So we, we talked about this at our budget meeting that we were going to be bring in new financial policies to you. We're applying for the Distinguished Budget Award from Government Finance Officers Association, and there are best practices that we must be doing. So we've basically gone from a six-page finance policy to a 25-page. <laughs> yes, we did. So there's, it, um, it requires a lot more accountability and transparency. There's some more work that needs to be done, that things that we're aware that we haven't been doing that we will start doing. Grants is a new policy that was not in our old policy. And there are a lot of requirements that we must do or we could jeopardize losing the money. Would you like me to go through the policies or just see if you have questions? I, I read them. So. <laughs> one one of the things it. that we wanted to talk with you all about as part of this meeting tonight was to get these policies out in front of you so you could 
be familiar with and see the difference between the former policies and what we have today or what we're proposing that coincides with some of the discussion during the budget process. But we want to make sure that these policies are part of our policies when you all adopt the budget for next fiscal year so that, you know, that we, we've adopted those policies, the budget's adopted, and then we move forward. So we don't want to be proposing a budget that doesn't coincide with the policies that we have. And this is for next right, year. Right, right. Yeah, okay. There was a right. line that uh, was redundant and that was, I had called out and now I can't find it. I'll keep looking. Okay, <laughs> thanks. Well, and these are following the Government Finance Officers Association's best practices. So yes. we're just falling in line with what the best practices are at this point in time. Correct. The last time we had policies revised was 2009, so okay. it's last time for, mm -hmm. for some changes. Mm -hmm. so Is that the last time we applied for this award, too? I don't know. I don't know if, if we, we ever, ever have. have. Oh, have we? we? Have. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When I was on the budget committee uh, early on, um, must be at least eight years, nine years mm. or so, there was a time we applied for it. Mm. Um, I don't know. I don't recall if we got it or not, but I do recall that Probably we were not. applying for it. I've, I've got the information still, <laughs> amazingly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Under budgetary policy, uh, uh, part F. Number six. What was that? Under budgetary policy, part F, number six. What page, please? It's page 19. It says the city's budget shall be prepared on a budgetary basis. That's redundant. We should adjust that. Yeah, I can change that a little bit. You can just actually, if you wanted to just say um, the budget will be prepared, Sufficiently detailed. Just knock out that phrase. Okay. And it would work. That sounds good. We have any more discussion? All I had. Okay. I think it's I a good move. move. Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. And necessary. I said I hope we get that. So we, yes. yeah. we have 90 days once we adopt it in June. Oh, okay. To complete everything that we need to do and get it going. And Cindy and I have a plan. Oh, good. <laughs> so <laughs> I noticed that it doesn't really spell out the the residual that you're supposed to keep, but it says you have to have one. Is there anything else? That it's under fund balance. That? Okay. It's going to be under the... Now, that was the policy that didn't make it into the packet. I brought you a copy. This one here. I'm sorry about that. Mm. that one. That's what you're looking for and we have been doing a million dollars in unappropriated ending fund balance in the general fund we're doing the same thing except we can't use unappropriated ending fund balance but we're putting it in a fund balance not appropriated the term is critical I mean if it's unappropriated ending fund balance you have to have a civil national disaster before it can be touched we still can't use it for anything, but if you have an emergency or the need, you can come to council and actually use that money. Now, what is considered an emergency? You're just talking about civil defense? Well, <laughs> in a, the way we were putting it in unappropriated ending right. fund balance, mm -hmm. you basically is going to have to be a national, you know, the governor's going to have be to. An earthquake. Earthquake, a major flood, flood uh, something. Some emergency. And so they don't recommend we put it in that no. line item. So we're putting it in the fund balance that they want us to put it in. Okay. All right. Okay. okay. Does that answer your question, Delise? On yeah. okay. That was a great question, Delise. <laughs> yes. Yes, it was. Are we ready to move on? Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, next on the agenda is our executive session uh, held pursuant to Oregon Did Public. Go around the table first, or reports and announcements. We, oh, that's right. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Yes, reports and announcements. <laughs> sorry, Daryl. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, for those of you who don't know, we did a 
open up the splash pad today. Yeah. Um, so it's yes. operating. We normally will open it on the Friday of Memorial Day weekend, um, but the weather's good. So they had it up and running, so they opened it up. Um, I gave you a packet of all the projects going on, and he's got a lot of um, really good pictures and information from the operations staff. Um, one of the items in here is the Fenton Avenue project. That's officially done. Um, the city has complied with all of our requirements, and I've included a letter from Clackamas County stating that we get that. So the grant, the grant was done, and we're approved, and we're finalized. So, um, good. Wastewater treatment plant headworks project that will start on Monday in construction. That's one of our master planned wastewater treatment plant upgrade projects. So we're chewing away at that list. Um, Benton sewer and water line replacement. That project will start around May 30th and will go through the summer. Um, Clark Park, they'll have all of the improvements, paving, signage, striping, everything done around June 4th. Um, we've gotten some folks that had concerns about the curb width um, from curb to curb. I went out and physically measured them all today. Um, there's 24 feet or more between the curbs. That's two 12 foot lanes. That's an ODOT standard. Um, just to give you a reference, that's the same width that you have driving down Malala Avenue in downtown. So right now it feels a little pinched because of all of the cones and uh, barricades and stuff that's out there. But by next week when they pave and they pull all of that out of the way, folks will really get a, a sense of how wide it is. It visually looks narrow and that's done purposely to slow people down, to get pedestrians across the roadway safely. And that should already be happening now because it is an all-way stop in a 25 mile an hour zone in a um, school crosswalk area. So we are, all we're doing is we're upgrading it to the current standard and there's more than enough room to, for vehicles to maneuver. They just have to slow down and be careful. Um, I did talk with the bus barn folks today. Um, the buses that were having some trouble with turning the longer buses, they're actually gonna restructure their routes so they have more of a straight across approach. Um, and that's pretty much it. Right now it feels tight, but give me about a week and a half and it'll open all up. So 24 feet, did that take in uh, the four to eight inch striping? <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm sorry. I well, I will tell you that <laughs> Gerald actually allowed me to go in the field today. What? Um, wow. Allowed you? You yeah. didn't make any It's changes. an inside joke. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but there was a bus trying to make the turn today and not run into the cones that were four or five feet away from the curb and not run into the cones on the other side that were four or five feet away from the curb. So he was trying to make a turn with all that construction debris in the roadway. Mm -hmm. um, and actually, I think if it wasn't there, that guy probably wouldn't have had the problem he had. But we were actually out there watching him. And uh, Yeah, the front tire didn't hit the curb, and the rear tire didn't hit the curb. He made the turn. And, and he didn't even knock him. a cone over. He's yeah. a good driver. <laughs> Very good driver. There so, you go. So we kind of helped him through. Well, I'm glad they're going to adjust the route, because if there was any traffic anywhere, that bus would not be able to make the turn. Right. But that's okay. Well, the other thing is the buses are going through there at the same time there is traffic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, There's traffic two times a day, mm -hmm. and that's when the buses are going through. So otherwise, it's... I think it's yeah. three times a day because at noon today I was trying to get yeah. somewhere, and it took... Well, and surely... And I couldn't turn left for a long time. Surely between 211 and Cole, mm -hmm. a little bit of a speedway. Yeah, yeah. So the, the other thing too is, is that the way the curb extensions work where the crosswalk marks are at, when you come up to the intersection, the stop sign is before the crosswalk. So you're not, as a vehicle, your nose isn't up in the front area where that cut across area is for a vehicle turning. You're actually back. If you stop where you're supposed to, where the sign is on this side of the crosswalk, there's more than enough room for a vehicle to make that turn. 
they're designed specifically to allow for people to move through there. You just gotta follow the rules and see where the stop sign's at, watch for pedestrians, slow down, make your maneuver and move on. And there's no parking anytime signs going up or are they already? They're, they're, the curbs are actually painted yellow. So with oh, okay. yellow striping stops, you can park behind that. And that's okay. another reason why they do the curb extensions because if a vehicle's parked there and a pedestrian is standing on the side, another vehicle coming up can't see the pedestrian. So that curb extension brings the pedestrian out where the driver's vision is at so that they can get safely across the street. And during the buckaroo, they do. Yeah. I've seen they're all over. Yeah. So. Okay. Shawnee? I have nothing. Yeah, <laughs> so my, I, I just want to point you to this map that I put in your locations as well. Um, this is the Heritage Art Walk map. Um, it's the current draft version of that map, but the locations of each art piece are on the map. And tomorrow morning at 9 o'clock, according to the schedule, the artist is supposed to bring Coyote and Grizzly to their final resting place. So he's not having a problem with the strawberries anymore? <laughs> no. Good. He was. Re <laughs> he did. It was of, of all this, the, he was having trouble with the glass he was using on this. It should be pretty cool. Um, the crew's been working pretty hard on uh, they today. They were out there working on the site today. It's a redesign of that little pad that's there in front. Um, it's going to be pretty cool. We'll have photos available for tomorrow night's dinner. Um, the pad won't be in. That's going to come later. Rocks will be set in the concrete. Um, there'll be other rocks as part of that. People can sit on those, but we are going to put a bench. Um, Councilor Klein suggested a cute bench. I'm not sure what that is. but <laughs> I've got pictures. <laughs> I can help with that. But anyway, if you're driving by in the morning or in the afternoon, you'll be able to see see the activity out there and it's pretty cool um i had a conversation with the grand ron tribe about this they're pretty excited about it so when we decide we want to do an actual dedication they want to be there okay super um so anyway that was all and uh hopefully it'll be big fun tomorrow you have a full crowd first time in eight years yes city's invited people into our community for a dinner I have a question about these. I don't want to rain on the parade here, but I see when I shut my eyes during the parade on some of these, I see little kids crawling around on them. Mm -hmm. On what? Mm -hmm. These? On the, yes. Mm, I can What's our that. liability? Thank you. I can address that. Well, I will say the artist that we're working with um, has an extensive history in working with every city in Clackamas County just about. Okay. And his number one priority is always safety. We can't ever um, guarantee that somebody is not going to climb on something or um, mess with something. But I know from a design standard and a design standpoint, that is a number one priority for this for this artist and all most every public art I work with. Yeah. So liability wise, it's no different than it's somebody jumping up on a picnic bench and right. jumping off or jumping on the swing. gazebo thing right. or a swing right. or anything yeah. else. Yeah, the the uh, the canoe that's out in front of Bymart was designed specifically so people could sit on top of it. Mm -hmm. It's a flat mm -hmm. top so nobody could get into it for a couple of reasons. One, we didn't want it to be filled with garbage. The other thing is we didn't want somebody to fall into it. Mm -hmm. um, so it's really it's really kind of a bench. Right. Well, the, um, the concern I had was um, that there were no burrs or sharp edges. On and the that's one. exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah. And there aren't. If you actually look at them closely. Very, very careful there, about that. There aren't. Any. Good. Mm -hmm. Good. Great. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And with that, I have nothing. I don't have anything. Do I? Do Does I have something? something? Cute bench or? <laughs> I Maybe she should have said attractive bench. I don't know. <laughs> well, my idea on the bench was, that, you know, working in public art for a long time. You know, I've 
had some experience with artists making benches on for streetscapes and um, there are some really kind of cool things you did, can do but there are some really affordable um, ones that you could do that have planters in them or have things that kind of just enhance the environment so right well, I there told, is I there, told Dan I would help him the, figure that out well, there is in our in our uh, parks public work standards mm -hmm. there is the cute bench section okay. <laughs> That's what I wanted to hear. I worked really hard on it. We're good. <laughs> Gerald worked real hard. Yeah, that's true. He worked really hard on putting that together. <laughs> we just want to keep stepping it up. Yes. Sticking yes. it up. Yes. Yes. <laughs> so we'll get a report next week on his progress on the Yes. Thing. Yeah, exactly. But yeah, other than that. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, Celebrate Malala is rolling. Do you have any idea how many? Uh, applications we've received in. I have not looked. Okay. What did you have? You got what, four or five the other day? I had four in my mailbox alone. Yeah. For, ex for vendors? For vendors, and Jen, mm -hmm. or, uh, pardon me, Ginger had already taken some in. So it was it was really exciting. I sent an email to all the previous vendors and some prospective vendors on the Sunday night, and Monday there was a man in there paying mm. to get his booth space. So that was pretty exciting. Good. That is great. Mm -hmm. Can I and back the date, up a bit? Remind people of the date. The date is September 28th this year. Yes. Last Saturday in September. In conjunction with that. In conjunction. Event. Would you just do this? Hopefully no rain. <laughs> no rain. <laughs> in conjunction with, with the Apple Festival, all spaces, and the whole thing is going to be open 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. There's nobody going home early or at different times or any of that. The mayor is putting together a, a great car show. He has his own big space for that this year now that he's mayor. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> It'll mean and so we're just so. getting excited about there it. There you go. There you go. I'm going to back up just a minute. I, there was something I did have, and I had forgotten about it until now. Did we receive an application for a student to take the student position on a city council yet? That's a good question. I don't know that they actually submitted the I was got my application. email that said they did, so I don't um, know. I was just we'll asking. Have to, we'll have to check okay. and see if that's in the email. But um, Okay. There was someone interested in that. Yeah, I know. I, I remember seeing that. That's and awesome. They were instructed to, it sounds bad when I say it that way, they were asked to yeah. fill out a volunteer app mm -hmm. like everybody else does. And I haven't seen it, but that doesn't okay. mean the reason I some other is, address. Yeah. I was, um, she reached out to me. I told her to fill out the app. She got back to me, said she couldn't find it. So I told her where to find it. She just got back to me. I think it was yesterday or today and said that she had filled it out. So did she turn it in? It was online. <laughs> you fill it out, print it out, and turn yeah, it Yeah, you actually oh. have to print it out. Okay, well, I'll tell you. I don't know if she did or not. Hopefully she did. Yeah, you know. that'd be great. Yeah. So, yeah. anyway, you probably, well, you've seen her before. She was one of the young ladies that came in about the plastic bag. Oh, yeah. Oh. yeah. Yeah. So. Natalie Litchfield. Which yes. apparently She's, is now in the state legislative process. Mm -hmm rather than at the local level. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So she could be, she could learn a lot. She could be a little She's help. A smart kid. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. I was just going to say, looking at this map of the Heritage Art Walk, I see a future opportunity for the Malala Running Club or walking or whatever of a Heritage Walk 5K oh, oh, or something yeah. that would go to hit all of these different places. Mm -hmm. That would be that great. That could be really interesting. Very good. So, Love it. Get your yeah. opportunities mm -hmm. when we brought them. They mm -hmm. come after bringing the art in. So, And even um, just a full-on... Um, public art walking tour guide, yeah. whether yeah. online or printed, because we have the murals, we have the Walk of Fame, uh, the Rodeo Walk of Fame. We've got a variety of things that could be included in a, a really broad overall mm -hmm. um, public art walk, which would be yeah. cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so That could be a future tourism thing, right? Absolutely. That exactly. tourism yeah. grant exactly. stuff. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. Very good. That's a vision. Councilor Shankle, uh, well, do you have the, my Corvette yet? Yeah, oh, yeah no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
uh, the, the chamber has the circus coming to town this weekend on Saturday and Sunday. Yes. Two shows for each day. And tickets are online or at um, various places around town that you can still get on Thursday or you can buy them the day of the show. And the um, 4th of July parade is coming up soon. Applications are available online if you want to be in the parade. Kitty's parade is July 1st. 4th of July parade is on the 4th. <laughs> <laughs> Makes sense. We get asked that what question a lot. <laughs> what day is what the 4th of July parade? <laughs> Day <laughs> yep. And on the circus, I reluctantly will be a guest ringmaster. Oh, you are going to oh do gosh. that? Yeah. So, so we will sorry. see how that goes. Oh. I want a whip for the elephants. Yeah, I'm not sure they have elephants. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, good. I won't get trampled. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, with that now, we will go into, uh, we'll have, to, I need a, well, actually, I have to read this first, right? You have to read your script, yeah. No, I mean before we adjourn. <laughs> this is my script. Go into it. Yes. We aren't doing... This is your script. No, this is once I get in. Uh, the, uh, we're not... We're only doing... Uh, oh, not, good. We're not doing litigation. So we're good. Only, Thank you. And we're not adjourning. Yeah, they're just, they're just moving into executive session. Right, right. We're not going to adjourn, now. Okay, uh, we'll, we are now going into executive session held pursuant to Oregon Public Records Law, or ORS 192.602H to consult with counsel concerning the legal rights and duties of a public body with regard to current litigation or litigation likely to be filed or to review, oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, sorry, not that, to review and evaluate the employment related performance of the chief executive officer of any public body, a public officer, employee, or staff member who does not request an open hearing? All right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. And we're not adjourning because we will be back. Okay. Just moving to executive session. Yep, just moving to executive session. We will adjourn the regular meeting later.